whence once and for all the destiny of mankind, of every one of us, but also the destiny of the whole world will be decided. It's a moment which we call the last judgment because it's a moment after which nothing can change. And when we think of our responsibility and the way in which we must face it, we must remember exactly the words of Christ. In the words of Christ which we have heard today, there is no mention of theological thought, of choice between one belief or another. The question is this, both to the righteous and to the sinners. Have you been human or inhuman? If you have been inhuman, there is no hope for you to enter in the kingdom in which the fullness of humanity and divinity merge together. There is another passage in the Gospel in which we are told that it is not everyone who will say, Lord, Lord, who will enter the kingdom, but those who have accomplished the will of God. So this is the first question which we must face. We are all continuously preparing for this encounter with God. And in this encounter, the question will be, have you been human or inhuman? Did your brother mean anything to you or nothing? Hardly are we prepared to say nothing. And yet, how do we behave to one another? What kind of world have we created? A world which is insensitive to pain, to need, to agony. A world in which most people are strangers to one another. Can we then stand before Christ and say, I am one of your disciples? When he became man, and became the brother of every sinner in the world. More than that, took upon himself responsibility for all the evil and died of it. When we behave to our neighbor in a way alien to today's gospel, we place ourselves in a position in which we will say to God, you may care for these people, I don't. And if Christ adds to it, what about me? If we are honest and we will not be able to do anything against it, we would have to say, neither do I care whether you became men because you felt such compassion for these people who are objects of my derision of my contempt, of my indifference, of my hatred? Doesn't it mean that in that case we place him in the position of these people? I don't care for your attitude to them. I am the judge. Let us think. Next week we'll have to face the service of forgiveness. Can we honestly face this service if we do not make our peace with our neighbor? And when I say our neighbor, I mean first of all the people who are close to us, around us, with us. Oh, it's not always that we treat them in a brutal way. But isn't indifference, cold-heartedness, neglect, a way of killing, it is. 
There are people who die of hunger because we are indifferent. In other circumstances, there are people who die in their soul because there is no one, no one who cared for what was happening to them. Let us think of this parable. Next week, we will have to face the judgment itself. Forgiveness. We all want to be forgiven. But are we capable of receiving forgiveness if we refuse it to others? How can we say to Christ, receive me as your brother, your disciple, but not those people. They are alien to me. Let them go. And yet this is what we do day in and day out. Not with the brutality which I express in these words, but with the same brutality put in soft words and cold indifference. Let us reflect on that. Because next week we will stand face to face with our conscience, with Christ, with one another, and say, forgive me. As Christ is forgiven, can we say that? Let us reflect on that.